Okay, welcome back. We're going to apply the basic identities to develop identities that are a little bit more complicated, not quite as straightforward, not quite as easy to remember. When you prove trig identities, you're trying to do anything you can with known trig identities in order to transform the two sides and make them look like each other. Okay, so for this one that I have here, I want to try and do something to make one side look like the other. Now, some t you may need to work on both sides, or it may be easier to work on both sides of the equal sign. And you can, as long as you make sure you separate them into left and right side when you start. Now, I don't care how you separate them into left and right side if you do it with a chart, or if you put left side at the top of the page and right side at the bottom of the page and just work through it. Uh, sometimes these things can get a little bit long, so you might want the whole sheet of paper to do it. Okay. Um, generally, you're going to start with the side that looks more complicated and try and make it look more simple. So try to get it down to a couple of simple things equal to each other rather than a couple of complicated things. Now, it's important for you, um, it's important that for each step along the way you state what identity or math operation you have used. So as part of your solution, you're going to say, okay, I used the Pythagorean identity, or I factored, or I got a common denominator, or something along those lines. In brackets, you have to say what mathematics you used to go from one line to the next line. That's all part of the proof process. Now, these two things are definitely equal to each other. They don't look equal to each other, but they definitely are. I would not ask you to prove two things equal if they weren't equal, unless there was a typo, which sometimes happens, but I'll try my very, very best not to have it happen. Um, please don't assume that just because you're not getting them to be equal that there is a typo. Um, that... Uh, usually sometimes you can work at them a long time and you're just missing one little thing to make them equal. Um, now there is not just one way to do these things either which makes them extremely frustrating to mark uh, because if you get down to the bottom and you have the two sides equal then I have to check every step along the way to make sure that everything you've done is mathematically valid. If you violate some mathematical law to make them look the same or come up with some identity of your own, uh, I can't give you marks for that. And I have had people do that before too. They've come up with some mathematical law out of thin air and said, well, these two things are the same because of this. And you can't do that. You have to have something mathematically sound. Now, you have to pick one side and start working with it. And usually what I do is I write both of these things down on each side so that I can decide. I might jump back and forth from one side to the other while I'm doing it. So I'm going to start by putting down on the left side was 1 plus tan x over 1 plus cotan x and 1 minus tan x over cotan x minus 1. Now I said before it's easiest to take something simple and turn it into something or take something complex and turn it into something simple. Um, another rule what I like to do and if you take a look at the identity page that I showed you before there are far more identities that deal with sine and cos than there are identities that deal with uh, cosecant and secant. And so it's much easier usually, and there's far more identities even, there's a lot simpler identities that deal with sine and cos than with tan. So I try, if at all possible, to get the sides into, first of all, the primary trig ratios, and second of all, into sine and cos rather than tan. So here I've got nothing but tans and cotans, and my logic, or what I would like to do, is try and get it into simply uh, tans and get rid of these cotans. So here's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to say 1 plus tan x is over 1 plus 1 over tan x. And my reason for stating this, I got to put it in brackets here, is because of the reciprocal identity. Recip ID for tan. Because cotan is 1 over tan. 
So that's the reason why I did that. Um, now I'm going to get a common denominator, but I'm also going to change this slightly. I'm going to change this to 1 plus tan x. Well, let's get a common denominator first. I get a common denominator in the denominator, which may be a little bit confusing, but I put the 1 plus tan x there first. And now in the denominator, I'm going to give it a denominator of tan x. And when I do that here, this becomes, this one is tan x over tan x. So the numerator is tan x. And this term here already has a denominator of tan x, so it's simply going to be tan x plus 1. And so what I did here was get a com denom, common denominator. Now, what should I do next? Well, next, I'm going to uh, invert and multiply. Remember, we got the 1 plus tan x, 1 plus tan x. Um, divided by that will be the same thing as if I multiply and flip it over. So tan x over 1 plus tan, or tan x plus 1. Tan x plus 1. Okay, and what did I did there? I um, invert and multiply. Invert and multiply. Multiply. Okay, so notice I'm just trying to simplify doing anything I possibly can. And this is helping me out here because now I can cancel those two things because they're exactly the same. 1 plus tan x and tan x plus 1 are exactly the same thing. So on this side, I have actually gotten about as simple as I can because those both cancelled to 1. So now I'm simply left with tan x on here. And how I got from this one to this one was cancel. Now this is about as simple as I can get. I could change it, change tan x into sine over cos, but I might as well leave it as tan because that is pretty darn simple. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my attention to this side and try to make it look simpler. And the process is probably going to be very much the same because I've got almost the same thing on this side. I've got this cot x and I had a cot x over here. So I'm going to try the same thing as I did before. I'm going to try getting it into tan first. So I have 1 minus tan x over 1 over tan x is what cot x is, minus 1. And my reason for that was the recip identity. So recip id. Now the next thing I'm going to do is get a common denominator. So 1 minus tan x is going to be over, and the common denominator here is going to be tan x. This already has a denominator of tan x, so the numerator stays 1. This thing needs a denominator of tan x, so it becomes tan x over tan x, so I'm going to have minus tan x. And look, we're getting something, something the same on top and bottom here. So what we did there was get a com denom, common denominator. Now I'm going to invert and multiply and go 1 minus tan x is uh, divided by this is the same as multiplying by tan x over 1 minus tan x. And look, these things cancel. 1 minus tan x cancels with 1 minus tan x. Those are both 1 and so this is simply on this side tan x. And my reason over here was invert and multiply, invert and uh, multiply. And now we got tan x equals tan x, and that's because we canceled, canceling. Uh, and so it's the same on both sides, which is what we ultimately wanted to do. We say those sides are equal, left side equals right side. We are done and the mathematical way of saying I am done, I proved what I was going to prove is QED. You write a big QED on the bottom. My teacher in high school said that QED stood for yippee, we're done. Uh, it's actually um, short, it's a, it's a Latin term um, and it translates into which is what is to be proven.
basically, or is what is to have been shown. Um, but you can just put a big QED, it's very satisfying to put a big QED at the bottom when you get the left side equal to the right side. Now that took us 10 minutes. Okay, I have one more that I want to do. Um, and I don't want to do a whole lot of videos on these. I'm hoping that you'll work on them in class and I can help you out with some of them in class and give you some strategies and stuff because there's lots of different things that you can use on these things. You have to make sure that you remember how to factor. You have to um, get the whole common denominator thing going. There's so many things that you can do on these that you just have to think of all of the math tools that you've learned in the last four years of high school. So we're going to start with this one. Oop, I moved things. Let's shift it back over. Okay, this is cosecant of 2x plus cot of 2x equals cot of x. Now once again, I promise you, these two things are actually equal. They don't look equal because how could cot of 2x plus something else equal the cot of 1x? That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But I promise you they are actually equal and it has to do with all of those trig identities that we have rolling around there. So I told you before we're going to usually start with something complicated and make it look simple. Well you can't get any simpler than the right side so probably we're going to leave it alone and try to make the left side a lot more simple. So we got cosecant 2x plus cotan of 2x is what's on this side. Now the first thing that I told you to do was to try and get everything into the um, the primary trig ratios. If you can get stuff into the primary trig ratios, um, then you have so many more identities to work with. So these are both secondary trig ratios. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the reciprocal identities to get them into the primary trig ratios. So the reciprocal of cosecant is sine. So this is going to be one over sine. And again, it doesn't matter that it's 2x there. This is going to be 1 over sine of 2x. And cotan is going to be 1 over the tan of 2x. And the reason for this is it's a recip id. OK, now what are we going to do? Well, I like to get everything in sine and cos if I possibly can. And, that's just, and I'm just rambling out here. There could be another way to do it. There could even be a better way to do it. This is just what I'm tossing around. As long as everything's mathematically valid, um, then you're good. So tan of 2x is sine over cos. And so I could have gone straight to using cotan as cos over sine. So this could have been 1 over sine of 2x on here. And cot of 2x is cos over sine, so cos of 2x over sine of 2x. I could have gone straight from this down to here if I wanted to. Um, I had the I had the tan of 2x intermediate in there, but that's all right. So we got the recip ID, and this one is because of the quotient ID. Tan of 2x is sine over cos, and 1 over tan of 2x will be the reciprocal of that cos over sine. Now, I can actually put these things together because they actually have a common denominator, so that's kind of nice. Um, so I'm going to write them as a common denominator, so I'm going to go 1 plus cos of 2x over sine of 2x. And that is a com denom common denominator. Now if I can get them into x's, because this one is x's, it's not two x's, so if there's some way I can get this into x's, so I'm going to use the double angle formulas. Remember the double angle formulas? Let's take a look at them. Here's our double angle formulas. Um, so I need a cos of 2x, or in this case a cos of 2a. So I've got three choices for cos of 2a. I've got cos squared minus sine squared, which I probably don't want um, because cos squared minus sine squared has both coses and sines and I'd like to get them into one trig ratio if I can. Uh, cos of 2a is 2 cos squared a minus 1 or cos of 2 is 1 minus sine squared a. 
So let's go back and have a look. And I've got signs on the bottom, um, but I'm going to change that too. Let's have a look. Uh, I'm going to change it into its. Would you shoot up? That's not what I wanted. Um, I'm going to change it. Where's my? There we go. Uh, I'm going to change it into this one because there's only one way that goes. Sine of 2a is 2 sine a cos a. So let's have a look. So on the bottom, I only have one choice. I'm going to have uh, 2 sine x cos x on the bottom because that's what sine of 2x becomes. And on the top, I have 1 plus cos of 2x. Well, cos of 2x, I'm going to change, and I have a choice. I can change it. I don't want the one that's cos squared plus sine squared. So I think I'm going to use 2 cos squared minus 1. So 1 plus uh, 2 cos squared minus 1. Now, what does that do? And we got this by using double angle formulas. So we double angle. This little thing in here just means an angle. Uh, now these ones are going to cancel, so I'm left with, oh, and I missed my x on the top. Let's actually put that back in there. Cos squared x minus 1. So when we simplify, we're going to get um, 2 cos squared, 2 cos squared x, and on the bottom we get 2 sine x cos x. Ooh, this is looking good. I can see all kinds of things that can cancel here now that I have multiplication on the top, multiplication on the bottom. Because the top actually means, and I'm going to write this out, although it's not completely necessary, 2 cos squared x actually means cos x times cos x on the top. And the bottom I have 2 sine x cos x. And so there's all kinds of canceling here. The 2's cancel on top and bottom to 1, um, which is really reducing to lowest terms. And then this cos x is gone on top and bottom because cos x divided by cos x is also 1. So I really only have cos x over sine x. So this is, this is cos x over sine x, and I feel a QED coming on. Cos x over sine x is cotan x. And if we take a look back up here, that's what we were trying to get to. Our right side equals cotan x. So we say left side equals right side. Q-E-D. Now, we have to put a few explanations in here. Notice I was getting kind of excited over the way things were going. So I wasn't actually filling in my explanations as I go along. That could happen but you need to go back and put in what you did in each step. So from this step to this step was simply simplify. Simplify. And then from this step to this step, uh, what I did there was just um, basically from definition, definition of squaring. Is why I wrote it out like that. And then from this step to this step, I did some canceling. And the thing that tells me that this and this are the same is the quotient identity. So quote ID and QED, we got the two sides equal to each other. And this time I only had to work on one side, but you can work on um, one side or the other side. Okay. So there we go. There's quite a number of them to test out in your textbook, and I am going to have a handout for a few more. The more of these you do, the better you're going to be at them. So that concludes this video.